the official biographer of Dr. Kathleen Lynn, Marie Mulholland. Thank you, Marie. Kathleen Lynn, Constance Markovich, Helena Maloney, Madeleine French Mullen, Margaret Skinner, Elizabeth O'Farrell, Rosie Hackett, Molly O'Reilly, Nora Connolly, Bridget Davis, Katie Barrett, Jenny Shanahan, Emily Norgrove, Annie Norgrove. Just a few, a very few, of the women whose involvement either as combatants or enablers helped to create the momentous events that shook this country to its core. Like all of those who took part, the women of 1916 came from a wide range of backgrounds, from privilege and from poverty they came. Nurses, doctors, teachers, factory workers, seamstresses, poets, actors, Irish and Anglo-Irish, Protestant, Catholic and atheist, single and independent, married, widowed or soon to be widowed, gay and straight. What happened here 100 years ago was a unique and powerful thing. The coming together of men and women resolved in their objective, united in their cause, made level by their commitment to a different kind of society. The women of 1916 gave new meaning to the identity of Irish women. They rebelled not only against British imperialism, but against the patriarchal system, which was even more entrenched. When you think of rebels, think of them, because they had to rise up time and time again to assert their rights as women, to fight for their independence, and to defend the message of 1916. Many of them had already risen before 1916 in their efforts to gain the right to vote. They rose up in 1916 to give of their all to the vision of an Irish Republic that promised a nation of equals. They rose time and time again because they had to in order to preserve that vision, to prevent it from being diluted or betrayed. From necessity, they rose and organized this coming the chapter, the League of Women Delegates, one year after the rising, to remind their forgetful comrades in Sinn Féin that women must have equal status within the organization. Dr. Kathleen Lynn told the Sinn Féin Convention of 1917 that there would have been no Easter week were it not for the support of women. They needed to rise and organize together in 1918 to ensure the success of the first woman, Constance Markovich, ever elected on these or neighboring shores, because all of the resources for that election had gone into the male candidates. In 1921, the vast majority of those women rose up to resist a treaty that would sever this island, amputating integrity for generations to come from the Irish body politic. Today, those same political formations in the Republic on the rare occasions when they do acknowledge the North, do so as if the bloody mess left in the wake of partition was all somebody else's fault. Because partition replaced one oppressive state in Ireland with two, North and South. The women veterans of 1916 with a new generation of women at their side, were forced to rise again in 1937. De Valera, in exasperation, no doubt, yeah. once remarked that women are the best and most unmanageable of revolutionaries. When he devised his notorious 1937 constitution, which ensured that Irish women would be denied access to much of public life and confined to the realm of a home, this time they rose to fight De Valera and Fianna Foy's betrayal of what the 1916 women always regarded as the first constitution of Ireland and its foundation document, the proclamation, where women and men were regarded as equal citizens. With the deaths of the 1916 leaders, particularly Connolly and Mallon, what came to the fore was an Irish nationalism 
only interested in replacing the British state with an Irish version of it. There was to be no challenge to the social and economic fundamentals, no challenge to existing relations of power within Ireland, between men and women, between workers and the owning class. It was all about the outward sign of independence, and it still is. Ireland squandered the opportunity to harness the abilities and talents of the women of 1916. Because the Irish men, who followed in the wake of Pierce, Connolly, Clark, Mallon et al, refused to share power with women. It is still happening today. Every inch of progress taken by women has come at a cost. Every argument won has been on the backs of women's sacrifices and suffering. Our bodies are not our own. They belong to the state. Our choices are not respected. Indeed, we are not trusted to make our own choices about our own bodies. But like the women of 1916, Irish women are rising again, as we have continued to do since our foremothers told us how. As Hannah Shee Scavenging said, it is for Irish women to set about working out their political salvation. She and all those others left us a legacy of resistance. They gave us all, women and men, an example to follow if we are to hold faith with the proclamation of 1916. I want to leave you with some uh, words from one of the women that I regard as one of the greatest 20th century poets, Maya Angelou. I don't want to appropriate the experience of black women because that would be unforgivable. But I want to celebrate with some of Angelou's eloquent words, the spirit of women's resistance that I've been talking about and in solidarity with women rising wherever they may be in the world. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Do you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like her, I rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm the great ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I burn in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so much.